so good evening everyone uh, in this uh, new session of our artificial intelligence podcast we have one of uh, the eminent personalities in artificial intelligence field mr ankush tawarwal who is the ceo and the co-founder of the artificial intelligence company which is primarily into developing various kind of chatbots for enterprise purpose so welcome mr ankush tawarwal and he is the ceo and co-founder of coreover and i have been trying very hard to get his uh, much coveted time so he has given me some time to discuss the scenario of artificial intelligence in india and they are doing a lot of work in the field of artificial intelligence they are also the main uh, uh, people person behind the bharat gpt also in india so Uh, we will get to know various things regarding artificial intelligence and chatbot development and other things in particular from uh, mr ankur sarwar so thank you for being part of this podcast mr ankur sarwar no, so thank you isliye for having me here and so sorry i know i took a lot of time to initially i was thinking of uh, developing a questionnaire for you which i generally do for all kind of podcast but uh, since because of the paucity of time i thought uh, i will keep it uh, as an extempore session for both of us so that uh, whatever uh, like insights i can like garner from your side regarding artificial intelligence in this uh, short period of time will be helpful for the aspirants who want to uh, enter this field of artificial intelligence as well as the people who have certain kind of apprehensions regarding artificial intelligence only because of the news and uh, no exposure regarding the artificial intelligence so uh, my first question to you in this like field of chatbot so how do you think uh, the uh, the artificial intelligence especially in the field of chatbot development will help the enterprises especially in india in the coming 2 uh, or 3 years yeah uh, no round Five years ago, uh, we went live with our one successful use case, and uh, since then we are just exploring uh, and finding a lot of opportunities, a lot of areas where we can actually uh, leverage uh, chatbots uh, to say so. Of course, now there are different names to it. We can call it as virtual assistant. We can call it as agent, co-pilots. So multiple names, and of course, uh, I think as you know, we have chatbots, voice bot, and video bot as well. And around three years ago, um, Satya Nadella uh, once said, uh, "Next five years, maybe I think two more years to go from now, every website would have chatbot." Right. So. but i think we believe whether website is required or not that is also a question right so uh, whether apps are required or not now you see uh, different kind of channels are coming up right so why don't we revisit using phone right so we have even given ai virtual assistant on feature phone now you see in india whatsapp so prominent right so had we thought about this kind of channel in our daily lives right so then why not chat bot uh, in the mainstream so i think whenever um, a company starts ex- maybe existing company as well so why don't they think about having this virtual assistant agent or chat bot as a primary channel right uh, because you see think about the website right which uh, no one starts a company without having website right so website is a main part of it and what happens in a website so we, you have the content it 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 radiates some information and and we let user struggle a bit to find the information what user wants radiation part is good what should be on the home page carousels what image what message that website does a great job there right but now Uh, customer doesn't come to just see the punch line of a company right so customer mm-hmm. comes to website to find the information relevant to their problems scenarios and all that so mm-hmm. website probably ranks a bit less when it comes to getting the right information right time faster 
So then there the virtual assistants come handy, right? You ask the information and get the response, get the information about the service. If the services are there, fine. If not there, fine. I should come to know, no, we don't have the service. And it's there is no wastage of time of the user. And company would get a lot of insights, what kind of products or services these users are looking for. And then they can also think beyond and increasing the portfolio. So I'm very bullish. I might be biased saying, you know, the virtual assistant uh, and AI is the next next big thing. And as you know, right, we are we are in touch since uh, uh, long and for many years we have been working with each other. Yeah. And uh, 18, we went live and before that, right, so we were in touch anyways. So, but if you see, uh, and uh, I think it looks like there there is some kind of telepathy or maybe uh, foresightness or something. We, we started it, what people are now uh, starting now. We started long back. Yes. And, and, and trust me, the deck, uh, the company deck, corporate deck, if I share with you, that's four years old. Yes. We did not change, right? So uh, we did not change uh, uh, because of the disruption coming in. And if you see my TED talk around two years ago and whatever is new to people, to the industry, uh, we were already working on it and we had forcing a lot of stuff. So uh, I think, yes, for, for most of us, we were uh, deep into this and uh, this is a regular progression, whatever is helping, working. And uh, for for the whole society, yes, few things are new, but um, I think it's all for good. All for good. I think uh, the businesses, society, we should increase our horizons, and uh, and uh, even whatever problems which uh, we had uh, settled with, whatever problems we thought, you know, that's a way of life, and we cannot, you know, get away with that. I think yes. that's a time to now. Um, unearth identify more problems list all the problems and now try to uh, you know to solve now because whether with emerging technology or with ai with new technology you might be able to solve few problems which earlier you could not and uh, since i'll be biased tech ai would come handy to really solve the problem in the right way and scalable way yes being part of your chatbot ecosystem which you have developed and have worked with along with your team like when you developed this product so initially chatbot was only meant for uh, like uh, inquiring regarding the products and the services which any particular company is giving like x company is having uh, products like cosmetic products or x company is having banking product or services so you are providing details regarding the through the inquiries on the chatbot so which has a, a particular uh, like uh, uh, mechanism for doing that but now uh, you are diversifying into ticket booking you are done, uh, now diversifying into voice based booking so that is a kind of uh, uh, another kind of revolution happening in the chatbot field uh, via artificial intelligence it is possible otherwise we uh, we are doing it through the traditional methods going through the modes of uh, various payment modes and booking the tickets but voice based booking and booking through chatbot is kind of another kind of revolution which is currently happening through your channel or platform so that is something which is making uh, like practically making the life of the common people very easier as a consumer like if i see myself as a consumer then it is very uh, like you know, easy for me to uh, book through that name and it is picking up only i think voice based booking uh, currently it is around 1800 to 2000 people are generally using this thing for booking the tickets which is increasing day by day so yeah uh, so like uh, how do you plan this like are you, are you uh, uh, planned uh, this booking part through chatbot then you planned this voice based booking so how like how, what kind of innovative ideas you think before like implementing such kind of things is it like something which is which was planned phase wise or it is something which happens spontaneously like yeah. there is certain thing that you you are a techie like you know that uh, technology behind everything but there is something which is new in in this yeah. field so how do you uh, like uh, how, how do you experiment or how do you uh, implement such things 
because it it is not uh, you know it is beyond our uh, thinking we generally oh. don't think that way you know i think you're being modest and few ideas you have given yourself right so what um, i think uh, it'll be too funny to say some ideas come in my dream as well so we have <laughs> we have a group here say today's dream right and uh, three to four good ideas have come in my dream <laughs> so uh, but you see if the mindset right the, the my, i can tell you about the mindset then these ideas solutions are not that important right the mindset is we have to solve a problem right so mindset is not about riding the wave of this ai we never got into blockchain right we are a tech company we can do anything right we we never got into nft right it's good people are doing good so it so i'm just trying to say it was new people made a lot of money that did not entice at all right. not even 5 minutes discussion i would have done with the team should we get into that do you is there an opportunity no because our mindset is to solve a problem right so in the conversational way right not all the problems right i cannot have solve the problem to go to the moon faster or to at least go to the moon can we no no so we have defined the area and now there are enough problems to solve and and as you were explaining the journey i think um, since you already know about this subject and that's why and trust me people don't even have that idea that evolution right we started with the question answer then transaction multilingual voice so mm-hmm. of course people are saying voice first um, but we have been doing voice since long and now we are saying video first but looks like the market is not ready for video if voice first and video next and mm-hmm. after two to three years it would be video which you are already equipped and as you know we are already live but even before that if you remember when we went live with ircctc ask krisha one of the data scientists joined us mm-hmm. and he was testing he said uh, ankush the chatbot is not working in ircctc Said, what do you mean it's already live and it's already day time and a lot of people would already be using and uh, uh, as far as i know we never went down yeah i said what do you mean send me the screenshot he sent the screenshot to me i said it's working so yeah. why he um, kind of uh, thought it's not working because the first chatbot which we had launched if you remember user was asking a question yes and we were giving two more questions saying hey you meant this or this mm-hmm. right because um, ircctc mean ircctc we cannot go wrong and people were also not so uh, adaptive to uh, ai making mistakes now the things are totally changed right people are ready to see some mistakes and you know not make fun of it just enjoy the uh, wrong answers so that time we were not uh, going wrong uh, and we we were trying to understand what user is saying yes. uh, in terms uh classification and entity extraction you say do you mean this and user has to click that time i think voice was not there user has to click and get the answer so we are giving 100% accuracy right so then when once we got a lot of data we know what people are asking again not 100% accurate and that's not we even aspire right you know at least 89% and all that which you were okay so we started understanding what users are asking so yes. then what users are asking we match and with the fear confidence level we were giving the answers right and right so that was a natural progression it's not mm-hmm. like we, we were so visionary this is what would happen right that was so natural and say hey now uh, let's do voice because the voice is a natural way nothing can be as natural as meeting face to face if not video call if not phone call right then probably the type and the clicks we techies and maybe the privileged people who got access to the computers and all that early we have started thinking that is the natural way of interacting with the software that is not a natural way right yeah. so for my parents it still is very difficult to fill a form to even apply for the passport right for a kid you see you uh, know um, kids so they are so comfortable t- speaking we so we have voice but we still don't use it because we think it doesn't work because when we had tried 10 15 years ago the voice was not working and we still have the stereotyping it doesn't work though what we have with the voice bot and voice based payment and conversational payment it's uh, and the idea is not to provide the small delta for the techies and people like us to find some 
uh, easy experience. No, even if it takes 10 seconds extra, even one minute extra to book a train ticket or to buy a grocery or to get some information, not a big deal. Techies, yes, we think in seconds, milliseconds. But as a common person, one minute doesn't make sense, right? You think about comparing, go to the uh, queue and get the stuff and now doing online. So the and our vision or the mission is not actually to provide the small delta. Hey, just change the uh, a bit color and change the flow or, or change the design and all that. No, we really wanted more people who have not been exposed uh, using digital commerce or digital stuff. They should use it. And how they use it? By using the natural way of interaction. Right? So that was the purpose of doing voice and even our AI works on phone also. And we even made even factories, the machines, assembly lines, CNC talk. Mechanics talk to the machine. Right? It, it's not so consumer centric in, uh, that this thing is not in the news. But in the factory, we, we make the machine talk. The yeah. idea is about natural. But again, when you said people are using it, very little, right? So question, answer, information, yes. But the transaction end to end, because it's 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 still people are getting ready, right? Yeah. So uh, the new generation would use it because that's a default. Our kind of people are being slow in adopting new technology that way. But uh, what the, the new generation would use, or we would also change our mind soon to start using this natural technology just like just like websites we have transitioned to the mobile apps so it has also taken a lot of time to go to the mobile apps although mobile apps were also there four to five years back but our users was limited to the mobile apps we were not also installing many of the apps because of the storage issues and everything now even phones have been like coming with a higher configuration where we are generally using the apps for doing any kind of transactional activities so uh, moving on to the third question. So I would like to ask you that since you uh, people are the brain behind Bharat GPT. So how Bharat GPT is different from chat GPT? Yeah, uh, see, um, chat GPT is big, huge, and um, it uh, has uh, kind of a lot of use cases. Um, even the creators might know the uses of that and users are trying to figure out you know hey now we can use chat gpt for this for this and uh, all of that um, see bharat gpt is 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 a kind of an llm to solve a small use case for a specific company a specific industry and um, so what is the technology in llm right it has a lot of data a uh, lot of uh, language uh, and um, it started doing NLU, natural language understanding. Earlier also we were doing, but differently. So we were doing a lot of pre-processing, NLP pre-processing, intent classification, entity extraction. But now with um, LLMs, so with the uh, patterns and deep learning, it started understanding what user meant. And it started even giving answers from the large content it has. So now the chat GPT can answer anything, right or wrong, older, new, That's whatever, yes. but do that. We don't do that. If you ask in Bharat GPT, who's the prime minister of the US, we would not know. Even we would not even answer who's the prime, prime minister of maybe India. Yes. Right? But if we give the content for a specific use case, maybe a bank, right? Bank X. So a bank X provides... I hope there is no bank called bank, bank card, right? So, but uh, bank ABC. So, you you provide any use case. Maybe it's a customer support, or maybe loyalty program, or maybe uh, any uh, customer specific information. So, you provide the content. Either it's a PDF, Excel sheet. By the way, now we have started uh, supporting the logical reasoning, the Excel uh, as well, Excel text. We have also now, uh, we have not announced, but it's already there in the platform. You can also now link website. So you just link website, it takes some time and then it will scrap and train. So you add your data through various forms, websites and all that. And now if their users at the client's user ask any question about that content, answer would be generated from the content uh, using Bharat GPT. And we'll also give the reference from where this answer has come. Okay. Right? 
So it's huge difference. So chat GPT is big in solving everything, correct or not, we don't know and all that. Is it US specific or it is global? Yeah. So uh, why Bharat GPT? Because we focus on uh, 12 Indian languages, right? So if you ask a question in Canada, you get Canada answer. If you ask in Tamil, you get Tamil answer. So, but the content again, though we have trained it with Indian conversational data, it 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 is more contextual and more uh, India centric. But but if you solve problem for India, mm-hmm. right? Of course, we have handled for uh, English, Hindi, and other lang- thing. It will work in other languages also. We might not be that um, uh, uh, kind of uh, accurate when say it comes to maybe other languages, say German or uh, maybe Korean. Uh, other other languages so indian language is more um, its accuracy is more but if bharat gpt accuracy in korean if it is not say uh, good but we have a core over platform right so core over platform what is does what it's a conversational ai platform so it helps create virtual assistants right? so now the first layer before bharat gpt also we were doing the same thing right so we you define these are the intents this should be the response the decision tree i want pizza which pizza veg pizza non veg pizza and that response can be static response it can be api driven response so mm-hmm. that is the first layer that is still there we call it as you know casual uh, ai or uh, classic nlp the second layer is using bharat gpt the answer would come from the content which uh, user has and now say uh, if if you use say uh, Korean uh, content uh, with uh, core over, so we do translation, right? Even if Bharat GPT doesn't under, does, doesn't understand Korean, but it understands English. If someone has asked question in Korean, Korean is a language, by the way, or not? Okay, so uh, in, okay, so so the so Korean would be translated to English, right? Mm-hmm. We get the English response. English should be translated back to Korean, and we give the answer. So uh, apart from these twelve languages, we do this translation degree, and the third. Third layer is we still allow business users and um, uh, developers to choose other LLMs. It can be Gemini, uh, Chat GPT, or you can plug in your own custom LLM. Okay. And if you ask a question, if it is not there in the trained knowledge base, not there in your content, you can get it from Gemini or Chat GPT. Uh, and the third layer, if you have configured it. So we have given this kind of no code platform to use these uh, services. So there's no competition uh, at all. Okay. with uh, any of these elements okay we give all these options it's a choice of a developer or the business to choose fine so my last question to you will be how do you think is the future of the aspirants who are planning to enter this field of artificial intelligence and uh, uh, regarding the apprehensions of various students especially the engineers uh, who are worrying about uh, the advent of ai and the reduction of jobs so what is your uh, you know guidance kind of statement for them so i think it's huge opportunity we should be you know india should be considered as ai capital of the world so why i say that um, two reasons one is again when it comes to ai uh, in my mind uh, when someone say hey i'm working in ai uh, I, we are a ai company we are an AI company. So uh, two questions in my mind, which I sometimes directly ask or uh, I try to figure out. One is the deep tech, where those companies are building the AI platforms. It can be open AI, um, yeah. you can go over our you know, Google. Uh, they're building the tech. Right? The second kind of companies, uh, with a lot of companies are coming up. They use this kind of tech and create AI applications to solve some problem. Right? So the, to build the AI platform, which can be better company than India to build the platform? Because as we know, any AI platform is as good as the data it has. India, with the virtue of population, we are generating data by just living life, right? So we have enough data and uh, it's it's available data. So uh, and even uh, even government is also giving a lot of uh, anonymous anonymous data we can make use of it companies also have a lot of data if you have to build solutions platforms for the company specific use cases so the platform so but i still think the deep tech we have enough right enough lot of llms have come up right uh, so now we should fix shift the focus to take this platform any platform whether it's built in india or wherever take the platform right now solve the problem again right. we have huge country huge problems 
various areas, right? Where if you say travel, what does travel mean? Whether travel, health care, uh, no, travel, say, travel by train, flight, bus, where, right? The travel in uh, Goa is different from, say, travel in maybe tier two, right. tier three, tier four city, right? So there's a huge uh, problem. We cannot even have one solution say, hey, this will solve all travel related problems. This is a super app, right? This is everyone is aspiring. But tell me which super app is successful currently, right? So it would be, right? It would be successful if you have enough data and the right partners with you. So, and I think for the aspirants, huge problem. No, no. Okay, let me not focus. Okay, let me continue. A lot of problems are there, right? Yeah. And huge opportunity for these aspirants to pick yes. any of these problems yes. and solve it with AI. Why I'm saying AI? Because um, one is... If it's non-AI, right, people have already figured out a lot of problems they're trying to solve it. With AI, we can solve any existing problems which have been fixed with the existing technology. You have an opportunity again to refix that, create new solution differently, better using AI. And think of new problems solved with AI. And now you don't have to write code. See, in India, only 2.5% techies in India, they know programming. <laughs> and where... Every engineering college now has programming. Uh, That's why we always like you know focus on the skills. Like, like there they, they are like there are many people who are having the degrees, but they don't yeah. have the uh, required skill set or implementation of the all those technical things which are required yeah. to be done. Cool. So like overall, uh, what you have said is that, that uh, artificial intelligence is an ever evolving field currently. And in India, as you said, that it is going to be the artificial intelligence capital. So all the aspirants who are willing to join the artificial intelligence industry, they need to uh, like work on their right skill set and uh, like work in a very innovative manner so that they are successful in this field. So there is no plethora of opportunities in artificial intelligence. Absolutely. So I will once again thank you uh, for your uh, time for this podcast and hopefully this podcast will be helpful for uh, the aspirants who are uh, trying to find their way in the artificial intelligence field. Thank you very much and I would request you to uh, like keep your video on for one minute because your video is getting uploaded. I think it is 99% uploaded. It will be uploaded in one minute and after one minute you can stop it. Once it is 100% uploaded on your side, then you can exit it. Sure. So have a great time ahead. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're doing great job, Kishle. Thank you.